Hello, I welcome you all in this presentation related with the subject failure analysis and prevention and we are talking about the fundamental sources of the failure. Uh, to understand how to uh, undertake the failure analysis if a failure has taken place. So, there are different directions in which investigations can be undertaken based on the initial uh, the indications and the directions. Uh, so, uh, we have talked about under the fundamental sources of the failure, uh, we are talking about the deficiency in design and due to that uh, uh, how the in what in what are the different ways by which failure can take place. So, uh, deficient design under this uh, we uh, have talked about the stress concentration which causes the localized increase in stress magnitude and that uh, sometimes causes the uh, premature failure of the component due to the high stresses through nucleation and growth. Uh, of the cracks and this is especially important in case of the brittle materials uh, because the brittle materials uh, maintain the sharpness of the crack tip and so the stress concentration is uh, maintained or that remains high. Uh, so, how to uh, take care of the stress concentration related failures and uh, what are the factors that affect the stress concentration? Uh, due to the geometrical features either they are present intentionally or unintentionally. So, the factors that uh, affect the geometrical features include the size and uh, the shape of the notches uh, in the material, but not the size of the component and the, the material. So, but not the size of component and its material. This is the initial stage, but if the material is brittle then the stress concentration will remain high and if the material is ductile uh, due to the stress concentration, uh, high stress concentration initially whenever there is a blunting of the crack tip the stress concentration is reduced due to the increase in the crack tip radius. So, the size and the shape of the notches is one then the type of the loading uh, whether it is axial axial or bending torsional loading or the fatigue loading is also there or the fatigue or the fluctuating load uh, then uh, there is another factor like uh, this particular shape of the uh, notches. So, like here although we have talked about the size and shape of the notches. So, in the shape whether it is in form of the fillets or it is in form of the groups, holes, groups, holes, keyways there are these can be in the different forms. So, uh, depending upon their dimensions like uh, the length depth and the radius at the corners of these geometrical features that will be affecting the, the stress concentration. Then uh, there is uh, the metal aspect, it is assumed that the metal behaves in linear elastic manner and it is isotropic. So, these are the things if the material is uh, uh, like say if we take any case here this is the component having a notch and crack tip radius is say 0.5 mm uh, and subjected to the external load. So, whenever there is external load the stresses will be more localized near the tip of the notch or tip of the crack. So, since the uh, uh, radius uh, of the crack tip directly affects the maximum magnitude of the stresses uh, because uh, here it was the length by root t or the that is the crack tip radius. So, if finer is the radius greater will be the stress concentration. So, if the material is brittle and of the low ductility 
then under the external stress condition uh, external load conditions the crack tip does not blunt it remains sharp and so stress concentration remains high but in case of the ductile systems if uh, the same crack uh, same uh, geometrical feature is present in form of the notch having the radius uh, rho 0.5 under the external load conditions uh, the crack tip for the ductile metals it will tend to get blunt. So, blunting of the crack tip will simply increase the nose uh, radius of the crack tip. So, increase in radius of the crack tip so like say from 0.5 to 1.25 mm then it will uh, lead to the reduction in the stress localization and the maximum stress at, uh, at the tip of the crack will be reduced. So, it will reduce the tendency for nucleation and growth of crack and which eventually will reduce the failure tendency. So, this apart from the size shape the mechanical properties of the material and the type of loading also affects the stress concentration. Uh, like say some of, some of the types of the loading wherein uh, uh, like in case of the torsional load the maximum stress occurs at the surface and minimum at the center. So, presence of the stress stressors at the surface are more dangerous. On the other hand uh, in, as compared to the case when we are having the uh, the axial loading. So, the stresses are uniform all across all across the cross section and in this case since the stresses are uniform. So, whether it the cracks or the geometrical undesirable geometrical features are present or the notches are present uh, inside or outside they will not have that much uh, adverse effect especially under the tensile load conditions axial uh, uh, which is of axial type means acting in longitudinal direction. So, uh, torsional stresses and the bending stresses are more harmful uh, for the, uh, the stress raisers if they are present or uh, means stress raisers are more harmful for the tensile and the uh, torsional and the bending stresses if they are present at the surface as compared to that at the center uh, or as compared to the axial load conditions. So, we need to be more careful with regard to the stress raisers especially in case when uh, these stress raisers are present at the surface and the component is expected to uh, work under the torsional and the bending conditions. Uh, and similarly if the component uh, is to be made of the uh, low ductility and the high hardness uh, high strength material. So, high yield strength materials show limited tendency for plastic deformation and which in turn decreases the tendency for blunting of the crack tip and so the crack tip remains sharp and which increases the stress concentration. So, uh, the factors like the geometry of the stress razor, the type of metal the type of loading uh, these are some of the important aspects that must be looked into while uh, uh, while uh, taking decision about the presence of the stress raisers and how to uh, take care of them. There are certain methods which have been proposed although this is not the exhaustive and complete list there can be so many ways also to reduce the stress uh, effect of stress concentration. So, stress concentration uh, effect can be reduced uh, through the use of uh, through the uh, gradual change in cross section. We need to adopt all those methodologies which will help uh, to have the gradual change in cross section like say change in uh, from large diameter to the smaller diameter in which way the change is being, ac being accommodated either we are giving the gradual taper like this or we are giving a continuous curve or some fillet is given. So, all these are the approaches. Uh, so, efforts are always made uh, to have uh, the, the change in uh, to have very gradual change in cross section. So, that the effect of the stress concentration can be reduced either by giving suitable taper 
or by giving the fillet radius or by giving the continuous curve. Uh, so, this will help uh, to reduce the stress concentration and it is always good to have the number of small notches or geometrical features as compared to the single and the big one which will be more dangerous, more harmful for uh, the components. So, better to have the more number of small notches if it is workable uh, as compared to the case uh, when we are using a single notch which is big and very wide. So, uh, third approach is use of the narrow notches rather than wide notches if the projections need to be used and uh, there is one more approach where um, uh, the suitable uh, stress relieving uh, groups are made especially at the locations where uh, uh, the sharp change in cross section is taking place. Uh, this is one, uh, there is one typical example like uh, if uh, uh, this is the kind of junction where change in cross section is taking place, then people drill a hole like this. So, uh, at the junction, uh, this is a, at the junction, the, the junction becomes curved and smooth. So, this is called, this is a typical example of a stress relieving hole or the groove uh, having the uh, having the particular fillet or radius or a smoother surface to have more uh, uniform and uh, less localized flow of uh, flow lines of the stresses. So, these are some of the things which can be done in order to reduce the effect of the stress concentration so that the component can perform for long uh, even in the presence of the special geometrical features. Now, so uh, if the failure has taken place due to the stress raisers or due to the stress concentration, then how to establish this? So, to establish the, um, uh, to, to investigate the failures occurring due to the stress raisers or due to the stress concentration, we need to understand the design criteria, need to understand the design criteria. This is the first one, whether the design was based on the yield strength or the fatigue strength or endurance limit or it was based on the some uh, creep rate or it is based on the ductile to brittle transition temperature or uh, uh, it is based on the, mm, the fracture toughness, stress concentration, critical stress concentration factor like K1C. So, suitable design criteria is to be identified to see uh, what kind of the, uh, the stress concentration factor has been considered, stress concentration factor has been considered in the design whether it was 1, 1.2, 1.5 so that uh, th these geometrical features can be taken care of. In order to understand in reality how the, uh, how the geometrical features have been incorporated in the design, so design criteria we need to understand, then size and shape of the geometrical features and location where they are present. If the geometrical features are present within the, in the inside at the low stress areas or non-load carrying areas, then they may not be that harmful as compared to the case when the geometrical features are present in the high stress areas, they are more harmful, so they will have more tendency to cause the failure than the type of loading. Since that uh, torsional and the bending, uh, for the torsional and bending kind of the loading, the geometrical features uh, uh, are more harmful as compared to the uh, surface geometrical features are more harmful as compared to the case, uh, uh, as compared to the case when the axial loading uh, is applied or geometrical features, surface geometrical features are also harmful for the fatigue load conditions. Then what are the mechanical properties of the material? whose failure has taken place, like if the material ductility is too high and uh, the hardness is low, then contribution of the stress raisers will be less uh, towards the failure as compared to the case. When the ductility of the material is low, hardness is high, toughness is also low. So, under those conditions, geometrical uh, features will have uh, or stress raisers will have uh, more contribution uh, towards the failure. So, this uh, needs to be investigated, means mechanical properties need to be investigated, what type of the loading under which failure has taken place, what are the geometrical uh, size and shape of the geometrical features like the size of the, um, the crack or the fillets or the radius 
what has been used, which kind of the stresses for which it the component, what are the kind of stresses for which component has been designed and then what are the metallurgical properties of the material. So, like say uh, sometimes despite of everything being fine, if the material metallurgical properties are unfavorable like the component is made of the material having large number of high aspect ratio micro constituents in form of uh, like say the needles or the, uh, the platelets or the lamb loss, then these will cause the uh, higher stress concentration at the, the tip of the, the, the micro constituent and the matrix interface and which will easily nucleate the cracks especially under the fatigue load conditions. So, uh, the micro uh, constituents means morphology of the micro constituents also play uh, a big role especially if they are of, uh, they are of the high aspect ratio uh, um, then, uh, then they will be nucleating uh, the cracks and they are facilitating their growth easily uh, especially under the uh, dynamic loading conditions. And then stress analysis also we need to carry out uh, to see that in presence of the given stress razor what will be the maximum stresses would have generated and whether the failure of the material under those conditions should have taken place or not. So, for this purpose FE analysis kind of thing can be carried out to see if the stress localization will be within the limits for the given component or not or the crack should have nucleated under those conditions. Uh, in order to establish if the stress stressors really have contributed towards the failure. Uh, sometimes the fracture analysis approach is also used uh, which is very uh, simple one like uh, if the material is of the high strength, high hardness and a low ductility and low toughness. If the material is of the high strength, high hardness, low ductility and low toughness, then it will also be important to consider the fracture mechanics approach which considers the fracture toughness of the material stress concentration factor or critical stress intensity factor of the material like K1C, the fracture uh, toughness of the material considering li like sigma root pi C. So, sigma is the nominal stress, C is the crack length and the pi is the constant. So, this is the material property, this is the applied stress and this is the, the note size or the crack size or the discontinuity size which is present in the material. So, under the given conditions if the, if the failure should take place or not that can also be established through the fracture mechanics approach. So, basically these are the analysis part to see the role of the stress razors uh, like the notches cracks if they are present um, in the material. Now, we will take up few examples related with the failure analysis uh, for the special conditions like uh, uh, the, the change in design of the component without giving full consideration to the various possibilities which can happen. Like so, this, the, this example basically is related with the spindle which was used in uh, the military vehicle. The, the geometry of the spindle we can see here. So, here actually this is a, a, an spindle which was uh, uh, re, uh, which is related with the uh, military vehicle. So, here uh, according to the drawing, uh, according to the design one hole was supposed to be drilled like this, this hole was supposed to be drilled for reducing the weight of the spindle. But they did not mention the depth of the hole because it, it did not play any big role except reducing the weight. So, uh, as a result of this operators used to drill the hole of the different depths. So, in one of the cases what had happened that the, uh, the operators drilled the too deep hole. So, the hole uh, the root of the hole reached in the high stress areas and once the hole reached in the high stress areas that nucleated the cracks and caused the, uh, the fatigue fracture of the spindle. This is the particular case uh, uh, study where the, the, the uh, due to the, uh, uh, the change in design unintentionally uh, by drilling a hole of uh, greater depth 
uh, it led to the, uh, the premature failure of the spindle during the service. So, this uh, uh, the, the case study is related to the fatigue fracture of the hard end 4340 steel spindle of a vehicle. Uh, the spindle drawing had a weight reducing hole, but uh, unintentionally uh, they left the dimension of the hole to be drilled uh, to be drilled because it was simply weight reducing hole. And uh, this situation led to the drilling of a hole of the varying depth in one of the cases the hole was drilled to the greater depth and that caused the failure of the spindle after 1400 miles. And uh, uh, to know about, so this is about uh, the introduction of the item which has failed and when it had failed. The, the spindle was made of the annealed uh, a annealed normalized AISI 4340 forging and uh, forged and tempered to the final hardness of the um, RC that is Rockwell C scale hardness 34 to 40 units thereafter finish machined in critical areas and short pinned before assembly in order to uh, relieve the residual stresses or to remove any uh, the feed marks and induce the uh, residual compressive stresses. So, this was the complete uh, uh, the case where the, there was a spindle and uh, the uh, this uh, location geometry where the change in cross section was taking place. Uh, this is the uh, the bearing support area and the enlarged view of this uh, root of the hole can be seen here. This is the location where change in cross section was taking place. So, the hole was drilled too deep and it reached to the high stress areas where change in cross section was taking place. So, this led to the nucleation of the uh, crack at the periphery of the uh, this hole uh, at the root. So, uh, and uh, this uh, uh, this uh, led to the growth of nucleation and growth of the crack all around the periphery and caused the footing fracture. So, if we see the macro examination of the, the failed component showed that fracture extended radially from the bottom of the uh, drilled weight hold uh, 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 from the bottom of the hole. Uh, drilled for weight reducing uh, to the periphery of the spindle. So, bottom of the hole is this that is what we can see all around the periphery and it grown outward direction all around the periphery and the no service no service damage or the material defect was observed uh, in this uh, from the figure itself can be seen everywhere there is a metallurgical failure and there is no presence of the uh, defect uh, in any of uh, the region of the failed component. So, there is no service damage or the material defect uh, which is uh, apparent at the fractured surface. So, uh, appearance of the fracture surface is a typical fatigue which we can see here like uh, we can see the concentric marks. Uh, at this location also these concentric marks at the arrow location suggests the uh, the fatigue typical fatigue fracture uh, with cyclic one uh, way of the bending because uh, it was it has grown in one direction and thereafter this is the final stage fracture zone. So, initially the crack grows in one direction and when the uh, stresses become too high then the sudden fracture uh, takes place due to the overloading. So, low to the moderate uh, low to the moderate overloading and the high stress concentration things can be seen here. Location and orientation of the cam shell mark suggests that fracture origin at the periphery of the weight reducing hole. So, this is the um, origin where from it initiated then it, it had grown in this direction and thereafter sudden fracture in other areas uh, had taken place due to the overload. Uh, entire bottom surface of the hole shows the deep scoring drilling marks. So, the deep scoring drilling marks can be seen here. This is not the fracture location, fracture took place the metallurgical fracture took place in all around this area only. And uh, these, but these are the feed marks uh, which are present at the bottom of the hole. 
So, uh, in our, so these, this is about the macro examination, uh, the macro examination suggesting the beach marks and the fracture due to the overload and the, the beach marks or cam shell marks initiated from the root of the hole where there were feed marks. Uh, conformance to the specification means we need to confirm really the material of the spindle was same as recommended or not, whether properties it had were uh, acceptable or not, whether the microstructure was proper or not. So, uh, it is also required, it was also um, uh, required to carry out the chemical analysis and chemical analysis suggested that uh, or confirmed that material was made of the AISI 4340 and it did not reveal any internal discontinuity and the hardness was found in the range of 38 to 40 HRC as uh, per uh, the specification and the microstructure also did not reveal any deficiencies or uh, discontinuities in form of decarburization, inclusions or other abnormalities. So, it was uh, concluded that fatigue uh, occurred, uh, the fracture occurred by the fatigue due to the presence of circumferential notch at the high stress areas which happened obviously due to the drilling of the hole to the greater depth and uh, notch presence was estimated at equivalent to the 40 percent reduction in the strength of the spindle means uh, at the junction there was a notch uh, uh, of the weight reducing a hole which reduced uh, the strength to the tune of the 40 percent and uh, variation in depth uh, occurred due to the missing hole depth information in the drawing. So, it was uh, mentioned the depth of the hole was mentioned in order to avoid uh, such kind of failures in future. Uh, so, this was uh, the corrective action which was recommended as a result of this uh, failure uh, analysis of uh, the spindle, the hole depth to keep uh, uh, hole depth should be kept about uh, 25 mm away from the high stress areas where change in cross section was taking place. So, this uh, uh, in this study what was found that the stress uh, concentration was found too high at the bottom of the hole where few feed marks were also present due to the drilling and they uh, reduce the uh, strength or load carrying capacity of the spindle and uh, which uh, caused the failure of the spindle by the fatigue. So, recommendation was that hole depth should be kept, uh, hole uh, root of the hole or the bottom of the hole should be kept away uh, about 25 mm away from the location where the change in cross section was taking place or that was the area of the high stress concentration. Now, I will conclude this presentation. In this presentation, I have talked about the factors that affect the stress concentration and what can be done in order to reduce the stress concentration and one case study related with the unintentional change in the, uh, the design of the component led to the development of the high stresses and so the failure of the component or that is the spindle took place um, from the location where stress concentration was high very prematurely. Thank you for your attention.